have a moment of silence, then we'll start recording. It'll be an official uh, quick intro. Uh, I'll turn things over to Jay, and then Jay will turn them over to Tony. So, that being said, guys, it is time for the moment of silence. Well, hello, hello. This is John S. Rhodes, and I'd like to welcome you to this very, very exciting workshop today. How to easily create your own book illustrations, even if you can't draw a straight line. I think you're going to love this today. You're going to find out exactly how to get the job done. Now, my co-host and business partner and friend, Jay Boyer, is also here with you right now. We are here for you. Ask us questions, type in, make sure you interact to get the most out of this. Now together, Jay and I have created over 250 products. We've published nearly 130 books. We've hosted more than 275 marketing sales, education and training workshops just like this one. So you're in the right place, the right time. We know how to host these things. We know how to bring on the very best people. Now Jay and I operate JJ Fast, and we are absolutely, totally dedicated to helping authors and experts and consultants and entrepreneurs, people just like you, share their unique passions, make more money, and as Steve Jobs would say, put a dent in the universe. Now, let me tell you exactly why I am personally interested in this training today. Uh, Tony Leidig is the man of the hour, and Tony is a visual monster. Not only is he great with photographs and images and so forth, he's great at actually creating images and, and illustrations and drawing. You know, pretty much anything creative that you'd put on a screen, I'd even say on paper and, uh, and so forth. You know, basically creating stuff, stuff you'd look at, eye candy. You know, that really juicy stuff you look at and go, wow, that just looks damn good. You know, that just looks good. And when things look good, they sell. They make people happy. You can translate passion into a visual, and you can translate a visual into passion. They're interchangeable. You get, you get the right graphic, the right illustration, the right drawing, and you will really light people up. You'll put a fire under them and, and really get them excited. And as you know, Jay and I are very excited and we're very interested in publishing books, children's books, for example. And I got to tell you, you get the right illustrations and you're going to have no problem, no problem at all, getting your own really hot selling book out there and for sale. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm excited about having Tony on. I could just keep talking about this, but I don't want to waste any more time. That being said, uh, I'm going to mute myself here. I'll be here behind the scenes. But uh, Jay, over to you. Hola, senor. Jay Boyer here. And first, I just want to thank you all for being here. What an overwhelming response we have had to this training. Uh, I recommend that you do not log off. We have uh, we, we may max out this presentation. No kidding. Do not log off because uh, you may not be able to get on. Um, we've been talking a lot about children's ebooks, which are largely image based and, and some, sometimes exclusively images uh, just a, a handful of words but they're almost all uh, image based amazing illustrations and artwork and even even uh, uh, stylized photos retouched photos that's what sells these books and we've been talking a whole bunch about it the past couple a uh, couple of weeks and I didn't even know sometimes the stars align uh, apparently the stars have aligned today with this whole uh, Mayan, Mayan calendar thing and uh, I didn't even we didn't really plan this but Tony uh, Tony gave me a call last week and said you know what uh, I have a training that I've been doing for some higher coach uh, higher level coaching students of mine that would be perfect for on the heels of the uh, children's book training that we just gave last week so um, I was so excited when he started showing me what the heck he's been doing and what the heck you can be doing to create these amazing images for your Kindle ebooks, children's ebooks or otherwise? I knew that we had to have them. We cleared the decks for this Friday, and and he's here, and he's going to show you exactly what he showed me. And don't worry if you can't draw a lick like me, it's not going to matter. Tony's going to show you exactly how you can do uh, make these amazing images for your books, even if you're a terrible artist or or uh, illustrator like I am. So I am gonna I'm gonna pass the ball right over to Tony. I'm not gonna uh, I'm gonna jump right in here and uh, welcome everybody and welcome Tony. 
Thanks a lot, guys. Um, it's always fun to be here with your uh, with your folks, and uh, we have some really good training tonight that we're going to get into or today. And so I don't want to delay because um, if you've seen me teach in the past, um, I enjoy giving instruction, I enjoy giving examples, and I enjoy showing you exactly how to do it. And that's the exact same thing that we're going to do today. Um, we're going to follow that exact same uh, pattern. So to get started, let's talk about what we're going to uh, discuss here in this particular webinar on illustrating children's books and easy book illustration. Okay, We're going to talk a little bit about the growing children's market and why illustrations are often the weakest link. We're going to uh, discuss using photographs uh, for illustrations and some pretty darn clever illustration tricks that you may not be aware of. I mean, <laughs> wait till you see what I'm going to show you. It's pretty freaking cool. And uh, some of the software that I use, uh, we're going to talk about that, and of course, much, much more. So just to kind of kick things off, some of you are aware of this, but I thought just to lay a foundation, it would be important to discuss this, and that is that uh, print-on-demand uh, printing and Kindle have boosted the children's book market exponentially. Uh, John and Jay have talked about a 475 percent increase in ebooks alone in this market and I think that that's a huge deal if you consider the context of where the children's book market was just a short time ago I used to work for a publishing company as a book designer I began doing that in 1993 and I can tell you for a matter of fact that it seemed like everybody and their mother had a children's book that they wanted to publish and the market just wasn't there for it. It was highly competitive. You had to be well known and unbelievably amazing illustrations to even consider going into the market. And as a result, the publishing companies that I worked with pretty much rejected all children's books, just flat out of hand. And the ones that did come in, the weak area in every single case was the illustrations. And we're going to talk about that here a little bit more. The thing that's cool is because of the digital age and because of the way technology is changing, this is only going to keep increasing, especially from a digital perspective because more and more parents, especially the baby boomers, are connecting with their children using iPads and tablets and smartphones and all of that, and that's not going to change. And the truth is that there's a lot of stories waiting to be told. I mean, there's hundreds of people here today, and you know, so that's hundreds of stories just waiting to get out there. And the great news is, of course, that there's likely always going to be children. So it's an amazing market that we all really need to pay a lot of attention to. Now, about your illustrations. Many children's books, quite honestly, suffer from poor illustrations. And, you know, just like how you've heard the saying, a book is judged by its cover, children's books are judged by its illustrations. Now, there are cases where having simplistic illustrations can work really well. But chances are likely that you don't want to publish every children's book with simple illustrations. You know, what if you want to do something more elegant, something that looks like it was oil painted or done with colored pencil or, or something like that? It's expensive to hire artists. I mean, it really is, having worked in that industry for years. And you've probably figured out by now that family and friends are not usually your best option unless they're really good at what they do and they're earning their living doing it. And I would guess that out of the hundreds of folks that are here, maybe one or two of you actually know somebody that would qualify for that. Okay? And as I mentioned, quality illustrations can be extremely expensive. I've outsourced uh, working with children's artists for years. As a graphic designer, I connected with them, worked with them, I know what they charge, and I know why they charge what they charge. I remember one book that we had illustrated when I was working for a certain publisher. We had uh, 40 illustrations done, and it cost us over $10,000. Uh, just And they cut us a really good deal because we ordered so many. And it was just extremely expensive. Now, I... I kind of pride myself on being an artist, have been ever since I was a little kid, you know, drawing all the time, and then photography and everything else. And I have struggled with illustration. 
You know, I mean, I can't these days draw to save my life, even though I used to do it a lot. And so, you know, I have ideas for children's books. My sister has ideas for children's books. And it's just been really frustrating um, over the years because that's been my weak link, just like yours. And so I started, especially as I became more uh, adept with some of the software programs that are out, and I'm always checking out new technology, to see if there were ways to speed up the process that anybody could do, including myself. And what I'm going to share with you today are some of those results, and they're, they're pretty cool. Now, there are some outsourcing options that you do have, you know, but it can be really risky. And again, there's expense involved, you know, so I, I'm like you. I don't want to spend any more money than I have to to get my book done because, you know, let's say you spend four or five hundred dollars on illustrations or more and what if the book doesn't sell you know then what do you do you're out that money so um, the secret that we're going to talk about today is really a question uh, and probably not a surprising question coming from me can you take a photograph okay that's what we're going to take a look at and the illustration that you see here on the right this pencil drawing is based on a photograph and what I've discovered and in case you haven't figured this out yet is that your camera is the ultimate illustration tool okay and you're really going to see that that's true as we go on uh, everyone has one pretty much you don't need a high-end camera for what we're talking about today so, you know, I'm a big fan of digital SLRs. I have several of them. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars on equipment. Not necessary for what we're going to talk about today. Photos could be used as is. And, of course, I'm sure you've thought about that before. Other people have talked about that before. And it is a very valid point. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that kind of clued me into using photographs as illustrations was when I was working for the, the publishing company, I was hired to produce uh, illustrations for two graphic novels. They weren't children's, well, the one was kind of a children's book. It was about children, uh, about ch child abuse, actually. So it wasn't a child's book. It was for adults. But um, the approach that I took, and they gave me um, full leeway to do whatever I wanted, the approach that I took was to use photographs and the success was uh, pretty amazing how the books turned out but then um, I still didn't realize the potential of using photographs as is for children's books until I came across a book back in 2000 called Stranger in the Woods and I don't know if you've ever heard of that particular book or not but uh, it's it's essentially a story about a snowman in the woods and uh, the animals of the woods, deer and, you know, different ones interacting with the snowman. And the book was created by uh, a husband and wife team of photographers. And the, uh, the book, no, nobody wanted to publish it, uh, so they decided to self-publish. It was largely photograph-based. The story was actually kind of weak. It wasn't even the best story in the world, but the photographs were pretty amazing. And what ended up happening was they spent like life savings and all this kind of stuff to self-publish this book as a coffee table book. Well, the book started winning awards. It ended up on the New York Times bestseller list at number one. And um, it since, has since then spawned a whole series of books all based on photographs. And whenever I saw that book, you know, 12 years ago, it really started something spinning inside my my mind like wow this is possible but then to take it even one step further you know because I can take a photograph so can you you know but to take it one step further uh, to actually convert those photographs in some cases into illustrations uh, and to do so in a pretty easy manner uh, is something that you know we're really going to focus on today so you can stylize your photos using filters and processing but there's also some other tricks too I'm not talking about, you know, uh, just doing something in the Instagram age, although, you know, you see more and more of that, uh, more and more of those types of apps showing up on tablets and smartphones. Um, 
one of the things that I've started doing, and I'm going to show you some examples here in a minute, is actually even using my photographs as a guide for line illustrations. And you think, oh, yeah, but now you're talking about drawing again. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> not exactly. Wait till you see what I've done. And so we're not just talking about taking snapshots here. You know, there's lots of ways that you can use your camera for illustrations. Um, you think about nature. I was just sharing the example about strangers in the woods. If you're writing children's books, animals are usually a safe bet um, because children love animals. Uh, you can do exploring series, you know, exploring the farm, exploring fire trucks, exploring anything. You know, kids love to explore. And so photographs make it extremely easy as a starting point, illustrative wise, to uh, produce books like this. Uh, sequence photos, where you're actually staging out different shots. You know, maybe it's a child in a different situation. They're playing in the room and uh, with a specific toy, and the toy teaches them a lesson. And so you shoot different photographs of them learning that lesson and then turn those photos into illustrations. Uh, puppets and claymation. You know, Sesame Street and others have made a killing off of illustrations based on puppets and claymation. Okay, and others have as well. So, you know, maybe that's your thing, maybe it isn't, but it's still another possibility. And then there's staging photos where you actually build miniature sets and all of that and then photograph those. So there's so many different ways that you can use your camera, not just to go outside and snap a picture, okay? There, and one of the reasons why I wanted to share these examples with you today is to really get your mind going. And hopefully some of your minds are kind of spinning right now. So let me share a couple examples. Um, this is a really cool example of one of the uh, illustrations, quote unquote, that I created, and it's based on one of my photographs. But if you didn't know that it was based on a photograph, you would swear it was probably done by color pencil or something like that. Okay, so very clean looking. Um, here are some other examples. Uh, the illustrations on the left, well, all of these are based on photographs, okay? The illustrations on the left, uh, I just used a very simple tracing technique. I imported the, the uh, illustrator, or my photograph, into a free illustration program and drew over top of it. You know, each of these took me about 10 minutes. Um, the photos on the right are just high contrast images that I produced in Photoshop and added color. Okay, so uh, a lot of different kinds of illustration options. Here's a completely different style of illustration option using a program called Comic Life, where on the left, uh, the program has built into it different types of filters that will convert your photos into what looks like comic book images. So this is my grandbaby, <laughs> Maya, whenever she was real little. And I just made this little comic book paint thing. Um, the one on the right is... Uh, a dog that I used to have cola and you know the same kind of thing this was not hard and what's cool is you don't have to do the you know the little bubbles and the statements and all that you can use the program to generate the illustrations and then put those in your book okay um, here's another example the photo on the left is the original photo that I took of um, a cannon uh, down in Gettysburg I live near Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And the photo on the right is a very stylized uh, oil painting, quote unquote, based on this photograph. And I'm going to show you how I did this here in just a minute. And so you can see the difference, uh, the very unique, specific look, okay, that could be applied really well to if you want really elegant looking illustrations in your book. This is a great method for that. And here's some other examples along the whole Gettysburg theme uh, based on photos that I shot actually in Gettysburg. And you can see I use the same color toning. I use the same uh, illustrative style. And by the way, these paintings, quote unquote, uh, took me about 30 seconds to create. Okay, so not that hard. And I'm going to show you how to do it tonight. Here's a, a closer look at the detail. Uh, some of these, including this guy who's playing Robert Lee, General Robert E. Lee. And so you can see the strokes and, and the styling is very cool. It's not hyper-detailed, 
but the brush brush strokes are very pronounced and it looks like an actual oil painting very cool looking very elegant and I, I mean I personally I love this style uh, here is another illustration option that's not based on photographs and I'm if I have time I'm going to share this with you I've talked in the past on patents well guess what there's millions of illustrations in patents and uh, I've perfected a method of taking low resolution low quality uh, line drawings from patents and turning them into very slick looking uh, full color illustrations and if I have time I'll get uh, to that this is just one example of, of uh, some robots that I found on the patent site and the thing that's cool is that anyone even you can do this so what we're going to do is actually get into the doing of it now okay so our little slideshow is done we're going to get into the actual doing of it and uh, I think you're going to get a kick out of this so the first thing that I want to show you um, here is one of the illustrations of the Canon and we're going to start off with this first um, I have two versions the this particular version uh, it's the exact same picture uh, it's just been stylized with fillers and a, a program where I just applied a bit of a soft focus and a tinning to it and but it's still the same basic program now what we're going to do is actually start off with this one and we're going to turn it into a pencil drawing uh, now I'm working in Photoshop for this example but the method that I'm showing you works exactly the same in uh, GIMP shop which is free okay it's exactly the same I'm just not a big GIMP shop fan so <laughs> that's why I'm not doing it there but the the process is identical okay it's identical alright so here we are and we have this Canon illustration I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit so you can see our Canon okay and I'm gonna make a copy of the background so I'm just gonna drag it down here and make a copy so now I have a background copy and what I want to do with that copy is actually convert it into a grayscale image and to do that we're going to desaturate it so I'm going to hit image adjustments uh, desaturate okay now the next thing I'm going to do is make a copy of this desaturated layer so I'm going to just drag that down make another copy and there you go so we have two layers that are exactly the same now the next step and this is important is that we want to invert this image and to do that the keystroke is control I or command I so I'm just gonna hit I want a Mac so I'm gonna hit command I and it inverts the image just like that okay now I'm not very sexy looking I mean you have the positive and the negative now what we want to do is actually take this particular layer and you'll see here where the blending mode is set to normal which is the default in Photoshop we're going to change the blending layer from normal to color dodge now in GIMP shop it's just dodge okay but in Photoshop it's color dodge so we're going to do that and whenever we do that it basically disappears but that's okay because we're going to do another little uh, filtering trick here that's going to give us an interesting result and watch what happens we're kind of going to come up to filter and choose blur Gaussian blur and watch what happens bam now all of a sudden we have the makings of a pretty cool pencil drawing of this Canon just by a simple filtering trick and as I change the radius of the blur the lines thin and you can see where I'm, I'm getting thinner and thinner but there's more detail and fineness in those lines so at 2.8 you can see where it's very thin if I come up to maybe 4.57 as I get higher and higher you notice that it's bringing in more shadowing and those types of things which you may or may not want to do that's your prerogative okay you can control one thing that I've done some is do two different versions of the um, the combination and then sandwich them together so what we're going to do just for 
the sake of uh, our discussion here is I'm going to go with a setting of around 5, you know, 5.2, and hit OK. All right. And so you can see if I turn this back to normal, it's just a blurry image. But whenever we switch it to color dodge and it's applied to the image underneath it, now all of a sudden we get this cool looking line illustration. So what I'm going to do is actually combine these two layers. And so I'm going to highlight them, just click on one, hold the shift key down and click the other. Uh, right mouse click and you'll see we can merge layers, so I'm going to do that. And now that the layers are merged, we can use levels to darken it or whatever we want to do. So I'm going to hit Command L or Control L for to bring up levels. And you can see here that uh, I can just I have full control over how this darkens. You know, maybe I can bring up the highlights to blow out some of the secondary details. You know, I could just adjust it however I want, but we're not necessarily done. I mean, you may be happy with this result, but we're not done yet. <laughs> okay, so let's say that that's kind of cool. I mean, there's before and after, so it's just a little bit darker. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, I'm going to make another copy of this layer. Now, everything that I showed you, um, you can do, like I said, in GimShop if you don't have Photoshop. Now, I'm going to show you another trick that's Photoshop exclusive. And uh, I'm using uh, Photoshop CS6. You can do the same thing in CS5.5, I believe. And it's a little filtering option under filter called oil paint. And this is kind of cool because uh, whenever we click oil paint, I want you to watch what happens to this illustration. And let me zoom in here. A couple levels. Just kind of scoot this up. And you can see, actually let me move it over this way so you can see the tree. Now, with this oil paint mode, we can take uh, and stylize this illustration just by primarily moving the top two sliders. And we'll talk about the other sliders here in a minute. But you notice that as I pull stylize and cleanliness down, we go back to the original illustration that we had, right? But as I start to move these up, you'll notice that it starts to elongate the strokes and stylize them more to where it looks very sleek, very elegant. Uh, in appearance and you can control how much distortion actually happens to the illustration. Now another option that you have here and I currently have it set to zero is lighting and I have the shine set to zero. If I start to increase this it actually shows brush strokes. Okay and so I can scale up the brush strokes larger or smaller but in this particular case, I don't want the brush strokes to show. I don't want it to look like an oil painting. I want to go with a line drawing. And I kind of like the way this looks here right now. Okay. It's kind of funky looking, but, you know, we'll work with it. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to apply that filter. Now, another thing that we can do, and this is where you can work with multiple effects is we have the stylized version here and we have the original and you can see that there you know there's definitely some differences there one of the things that I like to do sometimes is combine the two together so uh, setting the uh, layer that we just created and stylized with oil paint change that from normal to multiply and now it multiplies the two together so that if I go in here to hundred percent just so you can see the end result and then start working with the opacity, I can really get a cool combination effect. Okay, and actually I think what I'm going to do is reset this to normal and switch the, the level. So I'm going to take the original illustration and put that on top and then just start scaling that down. Yeah, I like that result better. So you can actually use both of them together or you don't have to. Okay, now let's take it another step further. Let's say that we just want to go with this cool looking stylized version here. Okay, um, 
so we're going to leave that as is. Now we have our original uh, photograph here still. You can see the difference and it's kind of cool looking. So the next thing we're going to do is turn off this illustrative layer for a minute and we're going to make a copy of our color version. And what I want to do is actually come up the filter again, hit blur, Gaussian blur, and put it out of focus. And what I'm going to do is actually maybe change it up to like, uh, say, 10, something like that. Okay. Not very sexy looking, but uh, that's okay. We're going to fix that in just a minute. So next thing I want to do is come up to the filter gallery. And you can see here where we have our illustration. And it's not very... Not very sexy looking, is it? <laughs> it's just kind of blocky and splotchy and all of that. This is actually the palette knife. Uh, filter. Uh, you can see if we switch, you know, click on different ones, um, the effect is completely different depending on which one we choose. And uh, I'm going to stick with the palette knife. And one of the things that I want to point out here, and this is this is really important, so I want you to listen to this. One of the secrets to working with illustrations, whether it's photographs or otherwise, is simplicity. The whole secret behind illustration is simplify. Okay? And if you think about most illustrations, they are simple unless people are doing photorealistic drawings or whatever, and that's fine. You can do the same thing with photographs. But uh, think about children's illustrations specifically. Usually they're very simple, and so to achieve similar illustrated results from photographs, one of the things that you have to do, because photographs record so much detail, is simplify the details and we're using filters to do that okay so in this case the filter that we're using is the palette knife and I'm going to hit OK and so you can see now the difference between these two uh, not a lot of detail and actually this kind of looks cool just by itself but whenever we turn on the uh, the oil painted line drawing that we just did and set that interaction to multiply now the line drawing adds detail and I hope you can see that it's it's actually kind of cool looking if I zoom in here a little bit more you can see where it has some really cool looking painting features to it doesn't it and if I turn those off there's the original photograph reduced down that's the end result which I think is pretty darn cool looking and it looks like a painting. Okay, now there's another effect that we can do with this as well, and this is all about layer interaction. Okay, right now I have this layer with the line drawing set to multiply, and that's exactly what it's doing. But if I take this and change it from multiply to luminosity, watch what happens. Now all of a sudden the line drawing takes on the color attributions of the layer underneath it. And it really won't change much if I turn off the reduce layer and go with the original photograph or not. You can see where the, the color att uh, attributions are being applied to the lines. And it looks a little light, so we can actually darken that just by adding a levels filter. You see the little uh, half circle round thing. Um, and uh, I'm going to add a levels version here. And if I just start turning that down, the levels for that layer, you can see this is a levels layer here. You notice how uh, now it's taking on a completely different look. And by the way, everything that I'm showing you right now, with the exception of the oil painting thing, uh, can be done in GIMP. Okay. So, uh, some different variations on the theme, and you can see just by uh, our original, okay, and then just the reduced version, then the uh, version with the line drawing enhanced by the levels, or we can instantly switch this layer back to multiply for this kind of look. And of course, we can still control uh, 
you know, the brightness and all those kinds of things later. So it's pretty cool, huh? And that's just one example, okay? I want to show you another example using the same basic methodology. Um, well, actually, before I get into that, I want to do something else with the other Canon illustration. And then uh, we're going to move on to a portrait, okay? So we're going to leave this for now, and we're going to come over to this stylized photograph that I took for my Sky series. Uh, this is the end version that I created for the Sky series. And if I zoom in here again, you can see it's basically just the photograph with a couple filters applied. But this time, instead of creating a line drawing from it, we're going to go straight to oil paint. And I'm going to zoom in here. And so you can see the same result. And as I push now we're going straight to the illustrate or the photograph itself and as I move stylization up and the cleanliness slider up you can see where it's reducing the uh, effect the sharpness of the photograph and it's creating uh, much more fluid looking lines that looks just like an oil painting and so as I continue to push those lines up you can see over here in the grass and in the trees and stuff how that end result is turning out then if I introduce shine just a tiny little bit, it brings in the brush strokes. So I can scale those brush strokes up a little bit. And so now, uh, without the line illustration like we had uh, before, just applying this to the uh, photograph itself, again, it looks like a very stylized oil painting. You can see where the, the brush strokes are following around the, the wheel here. Um, it, they are uh, directional strokes. You can see how it's following the branches and all of that. So very, very cool effect. Okay. And how long did that take me? Uh, with explanation, like two minutes. <laughs> okay. I mean, personally, just with what I've showed you here in the last little while, if that don't justify, justify spending 50 bucks a month for Adobe's products, I don't know what does. Okay, so cool little effect there. And by the way, what I'm showing you today is just like two of dozens and dozens of illustrative effects that you can do. Um, so let's take a look at a girl. This isn't my photograph. This is actually a photograph that I downloaded for a, a project, but we're still going to use her. <laughs> so uh, same thing as I did uh, the first time around. I'm going to make a copy of her layer just by dragging it down there. Uh, we're going to desaturate her and we want adjustments and desaturate we're going to make a copy of the desaturated layer and we're going to use control i or command i to invert her layer and then change the uh, interaction to color dodge or in gimp shop if you're using that we'll change it to dodge and it goes to white but again, we're going to come up to uh, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and boom. I want you to see the detail here. So you can see, as I change the blur, actually let me zoom out here a little bit. As I change the amount of blur, it controls uh, how much detail we're seeing. Um, how dark it is, the shading and shadowing. Okay, so that kind of looks cool. Um, so I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to merge these two layers together. So select both of them, right mouse click, merge. And then I'm going to use levels, uh, Control L or Command L, to just darken it slightly. Okay, so you can see we went from a regular photograph to a line drawing, like a pencil type drawing, in not a lot of time. And here's what's really cool. So we have this illustration now that we've created in short order. And again, if I uh, change the, the uh, blending mode of this layer from normal to luminosity, what's what happens? Now it's a color illustration. 
okay and it, again I can add uh, just by clicking here I can add a level layer and turn down the uh, the saturation or the uh, the levels on that top layer you can see where it intensifies the color okay so if I turn that off you can see the difference there and so here's here's what we have as the original photograph and here is the color illustration that we ended up with and again just like before we could get very stylized like uh, we can go back and do the oil paint uh, filter effect maybe in this case turn the shine off kind of doing some cool stuff with her hair isn't it and her eyelashes and all of that if we just go with these settings as is very cool effect huh okay so <laughs> hopefully all of you are, are kind of finding this rather fun right now but let's see where are we time wise um, okay so we have a little bit more time so I want to show you one more thing if that's okay is that alright John if I take a little more time and uh, do a little something else yeah absolutely Tony. Oh, yeah. that would be great Tony okay very cool alright so you know that I'm a big fan of public domain right and uh, one of my favorite public domain playgrounds is patents so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go over here to patents real quick and this is google.com forward slash patents and as I mentioned earlier there are a lot of illustrations available in the uh, uh, patents that have fallen into the public domain there's six and a half million patents in the public domain so we're going to pick one and I'm going to type in toy Jack in the box since we're talking about children's toys or children's illustrations and you might remember if you've ever seen any of my uh, patent training that you want to stick with patents that are 20 years old or older so uh, we want to reduce these results uh, and Google just changed how you do that recently uh, but what you want to do is come up here to where it says search tools and click on that uh, click on any time and then click on filing date and we're going to type in 1800 to 1992 so that's 20 years hit go and so now we know that the results that we have are all within our time frame that we're that we want so the next thing we want to do is uh, you can see where they're already showing us illustrations on different patents and uh, so we're just going to pick one and I'm going to pick this one and uh, zoom in here so it's kind of a cutesy patent I think um, and uh, see if I can zoom in here a little bit uh, it's kind of well especially since I zoomed in on it it's kind of blurry isn't it uh, but that's okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this real quick just one of them and I, I'm doing this just to prove to you that uh, we don't have to be using ultra high resolution images so I'm going to capture that and then come back over here to Photoshop and open up that screen capture I just made so we'll go here and here's our screenshot okay so here is this illustration and it's not pretty <laughs> I mean you can see where it's blocky and pixelized and it's at 72 dpi which isn't going to really help us out a whole lot especially if we want to make a print version of this book so what on earth can we do with this you know well check this out I'm gonna hit filter and go back to our oil paint and I want you to watch what happens If I start to play here with the uh, controls, notice how before I start it looks like this and as I start to work with the controls, stylization and cleanliness, it starts to smooth out the lines but because the oil paint filter 
follows line direction, it actually enhances the line illustrations that are there. And it kind of gives it a cool, you know, a cool looking effect. You know? So I'm gonna maybe just extend it here a little bit more. Very cutesy, I think. Hit OK. So now check this out. We go from this to that. Now one thing that I found about oil paint that I don't like is that it actually introduces a slight tint to the white. So what I often do is use levels, uh, control L or command L, and click on the highlight tab. If I double click this, you notice that I have all the um, levels set to zero. So if I click this eyedropper and just click anywhere in the white, it'll reset that to pure white and then just hit OK. All right, so just that quick, we transformed a low resolution image into something that didn't, uh, did not have all of the uh, jaggies and everything that was there before. But what's really cool, and this is where this filter shines, is that if I change the image resolution, say I come up to image, image size, you can see right here it's at 72 uh, dots per inch, which if I wanted to use this for print, it's not going to happen. Okay, so I'm just going to bump it up to 150. And so what happens is it gets blurry again because I just upscaled it. But watch, watch this. If I reapply the same filter at the same setting, it starts sharpening it up again. Okay, so you can actually apply that filter again and again, and it just sharpens the soft areas. And then I can just use levels to reset that white now. Uh, and of course, there's sharpened filters if you want it even sharper. If that isn't sharp enough for you, you know, we can use unsharp mask and sharpen those lines even more. But we're not done. Okay. So we have this cool looking line illustration, but what if we don't, just don't want it as a line illustration? What if we actually want to use, uh, to introduce color? Well, it actually doesn't have to be that hard because all we need to do is paint it in and it doesn't have to take long. So we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna set that layer to multiply. Take my paintbrush tool, and right now I have it set for 78. It's just a, a solid, no soft tool. And I'm just going to move it down to maybe 45. That'll work. And uh, pick a color. Gosh, I don't know. Um, that mint green will work. And then just paint it in. Now, I'm just using a mouse. I'm not using a pen and tablet or anything fancy or special. I'm not even coloring in between the lines in some cases, but that's okay. We could go back and edit and erase and do whatever we want later. But you can see here that, you know, hand coloring these things really isn't that difficult a prospect. Okay, so we'll just kind of paint in there. And so you think, well, that's kind of cool, but the, it looks a little bit two-dimensional, the paint color. So check this out. All right, so we have that. We have our green. So if we come over here to our layer where the green is and uh, we choose blending options and choose bevel and emboss. Watch what starts to happen. Um, I'm going to uh, change the screen mode color, the highlight mode. I'm going to click on that. It's currently white and I'm going to choose the green. And I'm going to click the shadow mode and choose the green as well. Now, as I start to increase the size, watch what's happening over here. Like if I increase this up to 100%, you'll be able to see it more. See how it's adding dimensionality? It'd be a little more pronounced if I lighten it here. And if I darken this just a little bit more. But you can hopefully see if I turn it on and off. See how it's adding dimensionality to it? So instead of you having to paint in highlights and shadow areas and all of that, 
you can simply use uh, bevel and emboss to add depth uh, to that. And so we could click OK and leave it as is. Another option that you could use is dodge and burn. So I could choose like the uh, dodge tool and uh, choose one of the softer brushes and just scoot it down a little smaller. And then just come across, you know, just paint in some of the highlight areas like that, like right where that bend is. So what's cool is that I'm not really drawing anything except for a little highlight area. And I'm not really taking that much time to do it. But just through those simple interactions, I'm able to add a lot of depth and dimensionality to an illustration. And it's not taking me very long to do that. Okay. And if you think about it, it's really not that bad of a deal considering we started off with that. Okay. So uh, definitely um, cool. Now I have some <laughs> comments from um, John. I have to go back here and read real quick. <laughs> okay. So um, so anyways, those are the samples that I wanted to show you today. So let me switch back over here to the slides, and I want to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Um, and first question, uh, let's just uh, consider some thoughts here. You know, can you see how you, you personally, could easily solve a lot of your illustration issues beginning today? Just by using, probably even just by using the methods that I showed you today. Okay? And let me ask you this. Would you love to discover all the methods and tricks that I'm using? to create amazing illustrations that I've already shown you and a lot more. Okay? I've shown you two. Actually, two and a half if you count the patent thing that we were just doing. Okay? And that's just a couple. So I want to introduce something to you and it's a new program uh, called Easy Book Illustration. And uh, what's really cool about this and I, I think that this is actually going to change based on a, a private message that I got from John. Um, <laughs> right now, the, the course is a, it's going to be a five module live webinar training series. Probably going to be a six module live webinar training series now because John's asking me to also include a 100% GIMP training webinar and I'm willing to do that. Um, definitely willing to do that because GIMP works a little bit differently and there's different things you can do with GIMP uh, versus Photoshop so I'm happy to add that in there but uh, here's what this is going to include uh, we're going to talk about the best photographic methods to use for your book illustrations okay so the the right types of photographs to take and how to take them and like I said you don't need to use any uh, high-tech equipment but you still want to shoot your photographs a specific way and it's something that all of you can do. We're going to talk about how to plan your photographs for illustrating your book. Uh, books, uh, storybooks are progressive and your photographs need to match those stories. So we're going to talk about how to actually plan out those shots before you even apply the cool illustration tricks that we're going to be covering. Then we're going to dig into uh, pen and pencil uh, pencil and pen and ink illustration methods step by step beyond what I showed you today there's several others that I've been uh, working with uh, we're going to cover a lot more in-depth different kinds of painting styles and how to create them step by step I'm going to get in uh, more into comic book illustrations and other de uh, design effects step by step this is going to be very hands-on step by step okay that's how I roll I'm also going to share with you a secret source for finding and using illustrations you can use for free. Also known as patents. <laughs> Just to reveal the secret since I already showed you. Um, but there's a trick to it. There's a trick to the research. And uh, I'm going to reveal what that is. And then choosing the best in the right programs, plugins, and more. There's both free and paid programs and plugins that I'm using for some of these illustrations. And I'm going to cover all of them. Okay, 
and uh, because just having the right plugin isn't enough it's knowing what to do with it okay knowing how to use it having the right program isn't enough it's knowing how to use it and that's what we're going to be covering and then what it takes to prepare your illustrations for print or digital publishing which you know I'm a 20-year publishing veteran so you know I can definitely guide you in that area and of course much more but I'm also including some uh, bonuses this first bonus is really cool this is a, a training that I did a little while back when I first started working with different methods for children's illustrations and it's a video and a, a PDF case study they're two completely different case studies where I work with a program called expressions it's no longer it's now owned by Microsoft but there's a version of it that's available for free both Windows and Mac that um, I use for this uh, you might remember the Native American illustrations that I showed you earlier this is the program that I use to create the, those illustrations and you can see where I just traced over top of a photograph okay now in the live trading in the webinar series I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing in Illustrator because uh, Illustrator supports the same methods now but as a bonus if you don't have Illustrator uh, you can download expressions for free and I have a training video and a separate PDF case study that shows you exactly how to do it and how to use it I'm also uh, including a printable storyboard template because uh, whenever you're planning out the illustrations for your story it's kind of like a movie you want to know what the next progression is from a uh, photographic perspective so before you're going out with your camera you don't want to waste time whenever you're out trying to take pictures and figure out what should be next simple really bad pencil drawings on a storyboard template can get that job done and then whenever you're ready to take the photos you just go out and take them my storyboard templates are not pretty I mean I, I should have included one but I would be embarrassed because they're really not bad uh, but I created a template uh, for you so that you can print that off and use it and then as with all of my courses there's a dedicated Facebook group where you can ask questions about the training you can share your own illustrations um, whenever you have new books coming out you can announce them there you know any new tools that you discover that we're not aware of or whatever you can share those um, it's just really an open group and you know I'm sure as with my other groups it'll be interactive and all of that so um, what we're going to do is actually offer you the five now six <laughs> webinar live training uh, replaced all the webinars uh, the expression bonus training video and PDF storyboard template dedicated Facebook group uh, the regular price in this course is going to be 197 and uh, for this webinar this is you folks are the first uh, ones to actually even see this uh, training and get access to this it's going to be $97 and as I mentioned I'm teaching it live beginning December 29th which is next Thursday okay so I'm going to be teaching it live so you'll be able to be there ask me questions interact as we're doing the training step by step okay so that's the offer here's the URL I think uh, John put it in the chat area and uh, like I said the, the special offer for the course and this is going to be a limited price is $97 so uh, guys is there any question Jesus it looks like there's a lot of questions I just looked at the question number holy cow <laughs> So <laughs> we have, uh, I'll tell you, from our side, the uh, the screen has been scrolling with questions and comments since you started, mostly along the lines of, holy cow, is what most of these questions are. But we're going to get to uh, lots of the questions that have been actually uh, rolling in here. Uh, but John, why don't you tell people about our special uh, bonus, if we, as if this, this offer needed uh, any more than what it already has? Yeah, let's do that. Tony, I believe that I provided you with a, a URL earlier. If you could bring that up and show folks exactly what we're talking about here, uh, I'd be thrilled to uh, to talk about this. So, yeah. folks, look, this is a great WordPress plugin. Uh, Jay and I have uh, played around with this. Uh, we love it. You're getting it absolutely free when you make the investment today in Tony's training. Okay, so this is what it does. Uh, if, are you yes or no? Yes or no? Are you familiar? Uh, are you familiar with Instagram? 
Have you ever heard, uh, have you at least heard of Instagram? Do you know what Instagram is? Okay, so yeses and no. Okay, so Instagram does the following. You take a picture with your phone, for example, right? It's an iPhone app, and I think it's probably on other, uh, uh, other phones as well. Uh, and I think it might even be a desktop thing you can do. I'm not sure. But you take a picture with your, with your phone, and you can apply instantly these filters to that picture. Well, that's nice that it's an iPhone app or a smartphone app, but how about for your own blog? That's exactly what this does. It applies filters to any image that you upload, and it's extremely easy. So you go into your WordPress blog, you upload the photo, and there is a drop-down. Would you like to apply a filter to the image that you're uploading? And you can actually see all the different examples right here. Now you don't do anything. You don't have to open Photoshop. You don't have to open GIMP or Paint.net or any other tool. You literally select the image that you want to upload and bring into your blog and then you just apply the filter and you have all of these choices here. And like I said, you don't have to do anything else than just select what filter you want to apply. Now that's the first bonus on this page. Now Tony, I think you might have to refresh. Um, you might have to refresh the page unless you can see it below. Yeah, refresh the page if you would. Reload it, yep. And what you'll see is that uh, while we were on this webinar, we realized that we were going to give folks a leg up. We are going to get them started with GIMP. So there it is. Uh, Tony mentioned GIMP a, GIMP a few times. We're big fans of GIMP because it's about 90% of what you get with Photoshop. It is absolutely free. It's uh, actually open source, but that means it's free. You can download it. We're going to give you these 30 videos. And you can see there, introduction and installation. So literally just getting started all the way through, hey, illustration uh, or uh, introduction and installation all the way through the, the different tools that are available, the, the different brushes that are available. This is GIMP 101. This alone is worth easily 50 bucks. This training, I mean, it's video training. You can watch. You can obviously rewind. This is in addition to that WordPress plugin. This package, this bonus package alone, no joke, easily worth a hundred bucks if you take that plug-in and you take that GIMP training. Super duper stuff. So if you're wondering like, well, what tool do I use? Tony has been talking about Photoshop. Well, look, Photoshop and GIMP and literally we are strong arming Tony. He didn't know it, but there's so much demand <laughs> for that additional training. He's got to have it. Now there's one more bonus on top of this that's not even on this page. We decided in looking at this that it totally makes sense to have one or more people from our team to attend this webinar uh, training. Okay, so all the training that Tony provides, we're going to have folks from our team jump on that training and we are going to create cheat sheets and step by step guides for you. So, in other words, Tony's going to do the training and we're going to have our team on that webinar over basically watching Tony taking notes, taking screenshots working with him after post-production and we're going to create our team is going to create step-by-step -step guides. You will have PDF manuals and cheat sheets to make this an unbelievable crazy over-the-top deal. So again you'll know before Tony gets started. Now Tony you said it's next Saturday you're starting the 29th? Next Thursday. Next Thursday the 20th. Oh, wait, it's the 27th. I'm sorry. I, 27th. Okay. So have, you're going to, so it's about a week or so, right, Tony? About a week. Yeah. So everyone who makes the investment today, and you'd be insane not to make this investment for the ridiculous, you know, professional level training that you're getting here. But in addition to Tony's live training, you're yeah, going to get training that gets you up to speed instantly, right? Because you're going to have that, that GIMP training. If you have Photoshop, obviously, you already, you've already got that, uh, that leg up and you're going to get help as well after these webinars because we're going to hand you the cheat sheets and, uh, and uh, additional print material. So it makes it a crushing deal. You've got the audio uh, and, and if Tony doesn't strip out or does not uh, want to or not want to, but if Tony doesn't uh, provide you with the MP3s, we will <laughs> or, or we'll strong arm him for that as well. So you will get the video okay the video replay uh, of each one of these um, these trainings you're gonna get the mp3 as long as it's okay with Tony it should be and you're definitely gonna get the cheat sheets so we're providing additional modalities additional ways to learn and reference all of Tony's ridiculous training in all six 
webinars. And again, that sixth webinar, we're strong arming Tony so that he does GIMP specific training to make the magic happen for you, okay? So that's those are the bonuses. We're trying to make it so ridiculous and so awesome. And also we know that a lot of people are interested in this specifically for books, children's books very likely, but books in general. Well, I got to tell you, Tony is totally in tune with that. We you know, we've been talking to Tony an awful lot and we're like, "Tony, look, man, we're going to be focused on books, right? For a lot of the training." Absolutely. So, we're going to make this work for you as a book author, as a publisher, and certainly as an entrepreneur. Another thing to keep in mind, this is pretty important, is that you, I mean, and I mean this, there's no other way for me to put this, you can't get this training from a book, and you cannot get this training from anyone else because it doesn't exist, and you cannot get this training from a college course. If you did take a college course, it's going to run you five hundred to a thousand dollars, or even five thousand dollars, depending on what school you go to. But you still wouldn't get Tony's twenty-year real experience. And remember, Tony is an entrepreneur. Tony's doing this for himself. He's an entrepreneur. So not only do you get the the mad skills, the how-to, the over-the-shoulder stuff, which is great. That's wonderful, but you're also getting his business experience. Tony drops little golden nuggets all the time, like, hey, did you know you can take these images and swizzle them up and then sell them here? I'm sure Tony's going to give you different mechanisms and different ways of monetizing these images, whether you're an author or a publisher, great, or you're just an entrepreneur who wants to make money doing this as a service for other people or providing these images as you know, uh, swizzled up stock photos you can sell, Tony can provide that to you along the way in this training. And by the way, the reason I say that is you can ask that question. You can ask Tony anything you want. He, again, he's going to give you the how-to training, but you can also basically, in effect, get some consultation from him, along with everyone else who's on the line, of course, but you're getting group consultation by asking great questions like, hey, Tony, after I swizzle up these images in three to five minutes, you know, and it's really awesome looking, can I take that image and go sell it on a stock photo site and make 100 or 200 bucks per month on autopilot? Tony will say, well, yes, of course. Let me show you the site and give you some idea about how to do that. And now, okay, let's move on. So you can make your money back in a lot of ways very, very rapidly. The price is ridiculous. I told Tony, point blank, you've got to, you've got, this has to be priced higher. He's like, no, I'm holding the line. I'm going to do it for you guys, but the price is going to be going up. Quite literally, I said, Tony, this is a $200 course. Behind the scenes, I said, this is $200. He's yeah, he holding really, the line at 97 He really did. He really did. I, I, I literally did before. I, started I emailed them this morning and said, what do you think I should go price-wise? And John responded back at, at double what I I said double. Uh, yeah. I, I saw what Tony was offering, and you guys know the quality of, I mean, let's face it, we had about, I don't know, what, 50, 50 minutes, maybe an hour of, you know, well, no, about 50 minutes of actual training. You get about 45 minutes to 50 minutes of, of training, you're going to get seven to eight times as much training as you did today, plus all the recordings, plus the cheat sheets, plus all the bonuses and everything else that we've talked about. Plus all the monetization. I mean, Tony really did did just scratch the surface. So you can go off and do this on your own. You can take the training that you got today. That's great. And you can go off and do this and, and do fine with it. Or you can learn even more shortcuts and even more ways to monetize. The ROI is right there. I mean, that that it's low-hanging fruit for you to do this for yourself, for your own books, for children's books. Do it for books for other people. Uh, sell it as a service. I mean, heck, we even had a couple of people. That, I think there were two people that mentioned Fiverr. You could easily go to Fiverr and say, "I'll do X, Y, and Z to your photo." Imagine like family photos or caricatures or whatever. You see these on Fiverr all the time, and you know most of the time I don't say just go sell your services. But Tony gives you the ability to take someone's image and, and in two to three minutes take that image and do magic to it and make five bucks. So you can make a you basically in effect you can make a hundred dollars per hour. You you know you get the gig. You can say sure, take the image, swizzle the image up, and then give it over to someone else. And I'm telling you literally, if it only takes you two to three minutes, and you're making five bucks for that gig, that that adds up. You're talking you know fifty to a hundred dollars per hour. Okay. That being said, Jay, I know there's a lot of questions. Tony, there's a lot of questions. Well, I'd, I'd like to start uh, poking. I'd like to say two things here before we get into the questions. One is that. This is one of those cases, you know, everybody's always concerned about image resolution. And this is actually one of those cases where starting off with a lower resolution image is better. 
because a lot of these processes that I'm going to be showing you, part of what I'm showing you is how to increase the resolution to where you need it for your book, but the effects that you're getting actually work better low res and then we bump it up to high res and maintain the sharpness. So that's a benefit. And the other thing, I was thinking about adding this to the course earlier uh, and I just I just didn't get to it. Uh, quite honestly, I decided not to. But with everything that you guys have thrown in, um, I think I'm going to do it anyway. Is that you all know? Most of you know anyway that when it comes to the public domain, I'm the person. I know more about public domain than anybody, I think. And uh, what I'm going to do is I have an awesome collection of websites where I draw upon to get free photographs uh, that are in the public domain. Like there's uh, hundreds of thousands of them. Of, actually, there's millions of photographs that are available right now online. You just have to know where to find them. And so what I'm going to do is include that resource as a part of the course so that if you don't want to take your own pictures, maybe you can find some on these sites and use those instead. Hold on, Tony. Hold on. I was answering a couple of questions here, and I swear you just said you're giving away or you're providing as a bonus today for people who make the investment today. Mm -hmm. You're providing a bonus on your on your public domain training. Well, n not for public domain blueprint, but it'll be what it uh, what I'll include is a resource, a PDF that will contain um, all the top public domain based websites wow. that mm -hmm. offer free photographs. Oh my gosh, wow. that's wow. incredible! The plot thickens, right? It just no gets joke. tastier and tastier and tastier. Wow. I don't think we've ever offered a bonus package this big no. um, on for, no. for any product before, but you know what? I want everybody to jump in to this, that jumped into a children's book formula because this is such a perfect companion to that program because it solves your number one problem. Where am I going to get these images and how am I going to, uh, how am I going to stand out from the rest of the crowd trying to do the same thing? Well, it's with images. 